home and native land, Toronto's newest pulp culture podcast, covering your favorite comics, collectibles, media, nerdific origin stories, and more. Hosted by your northern neighbor, Joey Pangolinen. Here it is, nerdos and nerdettes. Comics And we're back at Comics Inc. This is Joey. Sorrel. Jeff. Leonard. And Kenya eating you? a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say your name was Leonard? <laughs> no, I said Leonard. I was trying to say it weird, but it didn't work. No, it did, but not in a good weird. Well, now, well, yeah. we're going to call you Leonard. Lion- Leonard. <laughs> sounds like a Beast Wars character. Leonard, <laughs> <Lion> transform. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So we're back. We're crazy. Um, we want to talk a little bit about what's been going on with our nerdy week thus far. Um, right after Kenya finishes her one bite, she's going to talk about Jessica Jones. Because why? It came out season two. When was it? Today. Today. At midnight. At midnight. How did you... How many episodes is that? Mm, we're 13 episodes. You're okay, 13, 13 at 40 minutes each. 13 times 40. You had a math book. <laughs> oh, damn it. No. We're, we're not the kind of Asians that do math. Oh, man. I'm supposed to be an Asian. Yeah, I know. Okay, I hate admitting this in public. And on the internet, where it will stay forever. Granted, when Ooh, I do my right. first binge, I do tend to fast forward at certain parts. Because you just want to see the sexy parts? No, because I just I just like want to get the gist of what the story is. Okay. Especially if I'm doing a review. And then I'll go back and actually sit and rewatch it when I have proper time. Yeah. So that I can actually just evaluate mm-hmm. what is going on. I think that's just on. what writers do, though. Like, Isn't that just like a... You know, you, you watch the full thing and then you and like, take in what you want. The curse of having studied literature mm-hmm. in school is that now most of the time plots don't surprise me. Yeah, it's kind of given. It's, sure. it's you, you see That's it all. You know, media, how to, <laughs> you know how to analyze it. So a lot of the times I can call shit when I see it right away, and then mm-hmm. I'll be like, "Oh, okay." Oh like gosh. this is is the Netflix universe basically Bollywood now, where you just know that the guy in the field that's singing to the girl is gonna get the girl, but they I have know. two different like. Oh, like class I call, systems. I call, like I called her love interest right away, and maybe this is my challenge to the rest of you. Oh boy, call out who's gonna be her love interest in the first episode, Sarah. Uh. From DC's Legends. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was in my head. It already happened. There's <laughs> fan fiction. I don't even know who's in it. Is yeah. it a spoiler if you tell us who's in it? Character-wise. Mm. Yeah, it might be. Oh, hmm. man. Yeah, I know. Let's not get into it. But I, I will say this season's a very, very different from last season because I think it's much more focused on, like, Jessica kind of figuring out her identity. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think last season was a lot of it about her recovering from trauma mm-hmm. and like this and like you know dealing with Kilgrave. This is more like what happens after that. Like mm-hmm. after you're a victim, after you kind of overcome your trauma, you kind of conquered that fear and stuff. What mm-hmm. happens then? So mm-hmm. a lot of it is about her kind of figuring out herself and understanding cool. where she came from and what she was about. So I really appreciated that about kind of going through the show. Mm-hmm. And definitely like they timed it perfectly. It really seen it on International Women's Day. Like the show is very much about Je- Jessica and Trish. Nice. Like, that it was, and Trish. it was girl power all the way. <laughs> nice. And, I mean, you watch it too, right, Israel? Yeah. So I've basically been reca- um, trying to w- rewatch all of season one before season two. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, I am probably on the six episodes. I'm still halfway. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, watching it the second time around, you did miss, like, a couple, like, nods and stuff. And... Um, what I really like to do is I love Easter eggs. So just like yeah. re- rewatching it and then like actually noticing the different Easter eggs. So like I didn't even realize that like there was a scene um, where she was just kind of like pulling out like different stuff from her like past. And mm-hmm. she, she kind of pulled out a little bit of like a costume, which was like a nod to how she looked like in, in the, the comics. In the comics. Mm-hmm. Right. So I thought that was like super cool. And um, like, yeah, all, all of season one, I think it was. It's probably still one of my favorite Netflix Marvel shows because mm-hmm. it really just focused it focused on how a victim, you know, stop being a victim mm-hmm. and just kind of learn how to fight back, um, you know, against her abuser and just, you know, it, it was very much like you know you see the damage that um, the, the toll that she took with Kilgrave and stuff mm-hmm. and how much it affected her life and I thought that that was just really great and. 
she wasn't my ideal casting before. I think because I knew her from, from Don't Trust the, oh, Don't yeah. Trust the Bee in a part, and also in Gilmore, Gilmore Girls. Girls. I'm sorry, that's how I know her. It was very but, like, hard. It's to just figure you know you out. you see her as that kind of like fun bubbly mm-hmm. kind of person, and then you know when you look at her in Jessica Jones, it's completely like a 360. Mm. And I really yeah. like after a while, I'm just like you know what she's never going to be typecasted again. Let's no, just say and that. I can't I can't mm-hmm. picture anyone else being Jessica Jones except for her. So. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Did you like, like, I mean, from what you gather with your season two Um, I will say, I I don't want to be too spoilery, but, like, I Mm -hmm. I don't want to, like, really cloud anybody's viewing experience, but I will say season two isn't quite as strong as season one. Okay. Okay. How about the fighting sequences where she tosses people by bringing the fights, them close and then just... The fights and everything like that are still solid, you mm-hmm. know, just production level solid. She herself, like, again, you phenomenal. Didn't any, like, you didn't see any wires on her body? No, with the like, okay, good, like, good, she, good. like, she herself was <laughs> phenomenal. Like, again, she's a really captivating presence on screen. Like, you enjoy her character. But it definitely didn't have that same, I think, intensity that season one had because... You know, it's hard to top David Tennant. Like, yeah. that's... Yeah. How yeah. do you? Kill, Kilgrave yeah. was brilliant. It's really hard to top that. They did find a really interesting, like, avenue with, mm. like, the antagonist that she kind yeah. of faces. But I think that it's really... It was just really hard to get to that level. Like, he just did such a good job as Kilgrave. Well, it's really mm. funny, too, because, like, um, there's this, like, dorkly comic strip that I love. And it's just like, oh, like, let's watch Jessica Jones, David Tennant's in it. And it's like, oh, my God, I love the Tenth Doctor. And then all of a sudden, it's like, wait, what are you doing? Like, why are you such a horrible person? Like, just, <laughs> Stop just, it, Doctor. Yeah, and it's just, like, just, just his 362. It's just like, you know, he's such a lovable kind of goofball as the Doctor. But then you look at him in this one and I, I like that you got to kind of get a glimpse of his past too mm-hmm. um, so you kind of got to see like it, life wasn't easy for him either like mm-hmm. really it wasn't yeah. like if you watched it um, but yeah just to kind of see David Tennant in, in a role like that was pretty great but also kind of heartbreaking at the same time for the ones who did that's love a good him actor yeah. Yeah. that's a good actor right there kind of as a side note if you are a David Tennant fan and you want more of that fix he is on a show on Netflix called Broadchurch which is a BBC produced series and mm-hmm. it's about a murder that BBC. takes place in a small town and he is one of the detectives on the case. Again, really fantastic show mm-hmm. um, and he's once again in a character that you cannot really associate the Tenth Doctor with, but he's brilliant, so that's just that's brilliant, man. Just like my recommendation. From Purple Man as well. Yeah, like it's just like it's <laughs> just a guy. testament to his acting abilities that mm-hmm. he can be so many different types of characters, so if Very you nice. ever need a fix Broadchurch is your show for David Tennant right now. Very cool. The original version, not the <laughs> not terrible the American US remake. Version. <laughs> the BBC original British version. Remakes are always worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, Almost. except for The Office, though. Yeah. That's oh, the okay. One, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one revert. <laughs> um, and so that was uh, the TV world for us. And for the reading world, Lenny, The Filth, you were reading it. Okay. So this is a chunky... A uh, chunky ass book by Grant Morrison, uh, Chris Weston, and Gary Erskine. I had to read it like two and a half times over. Read a book analyzing it, then skim over it a third time because it's uh, it's not straightforward. It looks um, like a depthy book, man. Yeah, can depthy, I see it for a sec? Yeah, uh, there there is some disturbing imagery, like uh, being... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it market uh, so it markets itself as a medicine to the post human condi- uh, post modern condition. So. A sickness to, yeah. <laughs> like Fifty Shades of, uh, yeah. I'm not going to talk yeah, about it right the, now. Yeah, podcast, no, that's, that's, probably that's, written a lot better than Fifty Shades. Yeah, seriously. Uh, arguable. You can either love it or hate it because you can't understand the story first time around. But uh, mm. it's basically about this middle-aged man, uh, mi- lonely middle-aged man who everyone thinks is a pedophile, but he's not. Uh, he's uh, drawn into the secret police called the Hand who are really weird and they fight even weirder threats. But the main moral of the story or the themes that it plays with is that uh, there are two levels to this. Equating the physical with the metaphysical, as in like an idea is just as contagious and as dangerous to you as a virus. And in the same way that uh, like as above, so below. A person can be just like a germ infecting the rest of society as a body, mm-hmm. as well as an idea can infect a society, a person, in the same way. Sorry, are we still talking about the book or yes, America, this... or the states right now? <laughs> it, it's a commentary on the states. 
uh, post Margaret Thatcher Britain. It's uh-huh. it's really weird. It's, so I, I recommend you check it out if you like to if you like a puzzle. Yeah, <laughs> a labyrinth it's, of a book. It sounds like very Grant Morrison. But also, yeah. like I was just flipping through right now. It looks it looks really good. Like the art is amazing. Yeah, it's uh, Chris Weston ha- like hits that really nice um, balance between. Uh, crazy weird but mm-hmm. like realistic and then with like an extra bit of like everything feels damp and disgusting mm-hmm. yeah damp oh man that's damp. a horrible world <laughs> <laughs> it's a damp it, it world it looks damp it, it's, yeah, maybe it like moist damp. is moist oh. the word imagine being oh, moist yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 there's, this, there's Satan just doing a thing right there yeah very cool yeah um, so cool. it's it's really good you should uh, you should look into it yeah. <laughs> look, look into it a second time and then a third time and then, and then, read, then a the, and then read the companion book oh, and geez. then watch a few videos and then listen and then to his, uh, his lecture at this info oh, and then watch gosh. talking with the gods which is a documentary <laughs> with uh, grant morrison maybe you'll get something yes. <laughs> maybe <laughs> Yeah, and no, uh, Jeff, over to you. You were reading Batman: uh, The Flash, The Button. Uh, we have the lenticular edition, um, and it's really great. I think three, four of us pretty much read it or skimmed through it already. I mean, yeah. I just bought it because it was lenticular. It's like when you like first uh, started coming out, the real reason I was just excited about was all those like nice lenticular covers. Yeah, yeah. obviously, you know, it's um, twenty-one, twenty-two for Batman: Flash. Um, like looking back on it now, after like reading the story and like when I was first excited for it, because obviously it's like you know Watchmen and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fine. That's like half you feel, right? Yeah. No, but like after like looking back on it, reading it, like I don't know, I, it wasn't really like a memorable story. Um, it like, feels in like terms a bridge. Of, yeah, because like <laughs> there's like one like yeah. there's one like major sort of event kind that happens like with mm-hmm. Batman, sort of in the sense this is what happens to Dad, mm-hmm. um, and all these sorts of sets up. Like future and sort of decisions with him and um, Catwoman, mm-hmm. um, but like I don't know. Other than that, like it kind of felt like a non sort of thing to me. <laughs> you know, know what? You've read it, right? Well, look, yeah, it's it took you like pretty. twelve minutes to read the whole thing. First of all, yeah, uh, there's a lot. Right. It's like, not it's, very. Yeah, it's it, it's like, not chunky, just, yeah, but like. Just, I do like stop and pause at the art because, uh, like, page three, you get a really nice pun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. That's a great part right there. Okay, wait, do we spoil the book? How much can no, we talk can about totally spoilers? No, you can totally okay. do it. You can totally do it. I mean, I pretty much, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, it goes that Batman is waiting for the Flash. Uh, he's just got off call with him, is like uh, saying, like, oh, hey, get here as soon as possible. He hears a zoom. It's like, wow, Flash, you got here really fast. That's unlike you. And it was like, and then you hear a voice. Well, actually, it's quite the reverse, and it turned out to be reverse flash. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Bit, uh, <laughs> you know what, though, I feel that first of all, lenticular covers maybe like six months or seven months prior to right now, um, twenty like yeah, mid twenty seventeen, it started to come out with Marvel Legacy. Yeah, and let me tell you how that's just either it's just breaking the bank for everybody. You know, it's. It's nice. It's you know, it's a co- nice collector's edition, but necessarily the stories there. It's a surprise. You never know if it's going to be like a Kinder yeah. surprise story, yeah. or it's going to be like a really great Toblerone bar kind of story. Well, like also you got to look at the writer, right? Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I, I don't want this to yeah. be like my bias speaking because it's not. But I think that the DC lenticular covers have been mm. slightly better than the Marvel ones, like, like look wise, right? Look wise, yeah, yeah. And there's like better, better quality, too. and it's just yeah. better quality. Because like the paper for like the Marvel, it's a lot like cheaper. Where this is like it's more. It's very not so particularly, yeah. but it's a lot more like thicker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, like my only comment thing. with like Batman, the like Batman, the Flash, the buttons lenticular cover is the fact that somehow the artist and it trips me out because he managed to make Batman and the Flash have the same jawline yeah. and I'm like How? they're the same person it's like, it's like they're the same person but they're not but it's still a really beautiful cover to look at like it is I love looking at it for sure like, I mean, like, like Jason Fabok yeah see yeah, that's yeah. a Canadian artist Canadian artist again it is man we're Jason making Fabric. it it's great but like uh Ever since New Fifty Two, they have so many artists that just draw the same. J- tell the, can you tell the difference between Jason Fab- Fabok? Um, uh, shoot, his name Ethan Skiver. 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 Yeah, Skiver. Yeah, Green Lantern guy. Yeah, the Green yeah. Green Lantern guy. Another exactly. Same um, draw situation. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Uh, David Finch. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you know what? I feel like a lot of them are from kind of almost the same school. It's almost like yeah. if you look at the, like.